so having electricity just makes things so much nicer. Okay, just got back from Lowe's. Bought, I don't know, about $23.68 worth of pecs and a couple of hundred dollars worth of Top L coffee. So that'll be good. Um, saw one of these when we was checking out. And Missy said that would be handy down here in this basement. It would be perfect. So I agreed and bought one of those. Oh, uh, got bags full of fittings here somewhere, just the usual stuff. So we're going to get started. I've drilled holes about where everything goes, but I'm going to make a little, uh, some copper stub ups off of that water heater and uh, maybe go up 90 over and then make a, uh, for the hot side, I'm going to make like a PEX manifold. And for the cold side, we'll just take off and go wherever we need to because it doesn't matter. Uh, how much cold water you run, it's still cold when it gets to the faucet. Hot, you want to keep it as hot as, uh, as you want it to be hot as quick as possible. So we're going to use a lot of the high finch stuff for those, make individual runs uh, from as close to the water heater as we really can be. So we'll get started and try to get a little video along the way. The first thing I'm going to do is put these dielectric unions on the water heater. Uh, I'll put the one half on and then the other side I'll I'll put some copper pipe in there and solder it. So uh, I'll get started by just putting these on. So. I had to go outside and uh, get something, so I went ahead and clocked the gas meter. Uh, said it was 43,225 BTUs. It's raining, so I might not have been real accurate. I only did it one time, but uh, I think this little guy's a 44. I think they call it a 45,000, but I believe it's 44,000 input. So. We're pretty close. I hadn't checked pressures or nothing yet, but that's always a good check. Here's kind of what I got in mind on the uh, hot water side. You need to keep plastic pipe away from any sources of heat like that bee vent. Uh, it'd probably be fine, but might as well do it if they say do it. So uh, I'm coming both this way and going back that way. Going back that way, I only have two connections on the hot. There's a shower right on the other side of that first joist you come to. So I'll go three quarter inch. Okay, let's try this again. Uh, Okay, I got a three quarter inch back here. It'll be going that way. I only have two connections back there. There's a shower right past that next joist that has to go up through the floor. And then on back there where you see, or if you can see that pipe coming down back there, that's where the vanity will be. So I'll need to run uh, a half inch on back there and pick it up. And that'll be the only hot going that direction. Then on this side, what we're probably gonna do is immediately uh, come off of here 
and we'll we'll catch this guy here coming around to the to the washing machine I'll probably go up here I was just seeing how it bent but that hole there goes up to the washing machine and then see that's a sink cold so this will be hot so we'll have another one here coming over and teeing in uh, straight back there we have our vanity it'll come back and tee in and then right here we have a bathtub so it'll tee in and then coming off the very end is a long one that goes around to the kitchen sink and it's just half inch and so it'll go all the way around right in that area right there so we'll get all this hot done first get it out of the way and then uh, the code's a little more complex because it goes more places like toilets and uh, over here to the supply you got a uh, expansion tanks got to go into it pressure reducer stuff like that so we'll start putting some of this hot together okay we've got the uh, hot water coming up here we're just going to go ahead and hook this one up to the washing machine box because it's going to be the first one once we come out of the water heater first tea we need so i can cut it to length once i get it attached up here in the right location so what I've done, I went ahead and slipped our insulation over it, uh, slipped it up over the uh, Hex Ready washer box here. So all we got to do is cramp her in there, hope we can fit in here. And our go, no go says go. So that's our first connection besides copper. Well, I had to run out and get a couple more things. I think I'm gonna go ahead and insulate the cold water lines as well. Um, I haven't strapped any of this up yet. I bought some uh, Rubitex that's a uh, you know, slit that I could put over that three quarter stuff. I'll probably wait until I test because everything else you can get to, you know, just by pulling this back. But all the high finch or high finch stuff is insulated. But, uh, you know, we had to have some pizza. Mm, yeah. I'll be back. ran back into this area and got everything picked up and insulated as we came but now we're at the point where we've got to decide how to connect the water to the water heater and also uh, connect to the expansion tank for the water heater and I think what I'm going to do with it I need a, a bracket here on the wall to hold this sewer line up anyway so what I think I'll do is lag this piece of unistrut to the wall. I can use this clamp to hold the sewer pipe and then I'll stick it up a little higher and use a, a bracket that bolts on here and you got these bands that wrap around and will hold your expansion tank. So I'm gonna get started mounting this unistrut to the wall. Just using these, like we used to call them lead shields. I'm not sure they're lead now, but it's just a lag 
shield. That's good and sturdy. Um, this is the little bracket they sell locally here for this tank. Where are you? And it's got a little notch in it that's supposed to be for the rib on the tank. However, it's way too high for this particular tank. It would about work for that one right there. I don't know if I should, uh, I may, I can go right on that. Uh, it'll, the notch will fit right here, but it, it's got a bigger notch up here. And of course, if you put it all the way up here, it's actually too far up. So I may take a, I think I've got a file. Uh, I may take a file and try to make a little notch here, just see how hard this is. Uh, if not, I'll just clamp it uh, just like it is, but it's going to be okay either way. So I just notched that a little bit to make it set a little closer to the tank. Time I put the two straps on it, it should pull in pretty good. <clears throat> okay, these clamps are about 375 feet long. I think they're made for a lot of different size tanks, but uh, looks like you could probably cut them off pretty easy. So if I lay this guy in here and get them notches kind of close, so if I can do this one-handed, I might have should have got a little closer on the straps before I tried. That is going to be the one that does all the holding right underneath that middle seam. OCD ain't going to let me leave that label crooked once to turn it, make it straight out. Okay, that's good and sturdy there, hanging there. And what I'm gonna actually do, the uh, water line, I'm gonna have a pressure reducer that I'll probably put right in this general area. And then I'll probably uh, put my control valve or my turnoff valve right here. The reason I've got this swooped up like this is if you remember back one of the early, early episodes, I sleeved this water line all the way out to the meter box in case we ever had to pull another one through. Plus it protects the pecs against rocks, roots and whatnot. But the uh, problem with that is, you've seen how low the driveway is there and how water stands in it. If you get a, a day or two of rain, the way the grade is right now, the meter box will actually fill up with water and it'll follow this black pipe back and dump into the basement here. So I actually warmed this pipe up and bent it upward to try to get it up above the outside grade. So I'm gonna leave it like that. Like I say, this is no, no Taj Mahal down here anyway, so it's just going to stick out from the wall a little bit, but we'll, uh, I can bend it up here a little bit when I do the work, but I'll probably just 90 the, the pecs right here, go back this way, put a control valve, and then turn and come across the top of this. Once we hit here, I'll probably put a T that's uh, standing up this way, and I'll go up and head toward the uh, joist, and then go back over to get into the rest of the plumbing. So that's my plan. Let's see if it works. Remember this guy from a couple of days ago? He's getting lots of use. Here's my PEX Ready pressure reducer. Um, it's got a place for a pressure gauge, which I think is still in the box. But when I picked it up and was screwing these uh, ends on it, I noticed the way the arrow was pointing and noticed where the display was for the pressure setting. And I thought, that's just great. It's backwards. So I flipped it over. And they got it on both sides. Nice job. So I'll put my little pressure gauge on right here before I uh, uh, install it. I think I can get one more turn out of her. Famous last words. OK, 
Okay. Well, here's my old pressure testing gauge for the gas. I had this bad gauge on it that wouldn't uh, go down unless you tapped on it. So I'm doing the right thing and replacing it with a gauge I found in my 20 year old box of plumbing supplies. It's not even on zero right now, but it goes to 60 PSI. Uh, I've got this gauge up here on the pressure reducer too, so maybe it'll tell us something too. It should have some kind of pressure. I mean, we can crank that thing up to 60. Theoretically, if I put 60 PS on this side and that's set on 60, I should have 60 over here. So we can check the gauge out. This will just give me a way to add air to the system through this little Schrader core. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a female adapter. I'll screw this female adapter on it I'll extend this line out longer than it needs to be and I'll uh, put this gauge out here so we can pump it up and keep an eye on it and then if everything passes all I have to do is make my final connection here between this one inch uh, line going to the street and uh, the actual line that I made that was too long so I'll get this put on there and we'll start heading back toward the uh, water heater Okay, so I ran out of three quarter inch crimp rings downstairs, so I'm gonna jump up here and uh, start doing one of these shower faucets. They're kind of time consuming compared to everything else. And it'll give me the opportunity to make sure I don't need nothing else before I make another trip to the hardware store. Okay, we need to get this shower valve PEX ready by putting on some uh, half inch female threaded adapters. I uh, already found something else I'll need. This is the shower valve and they do not give you the plug for the bottom uh, that would normally go down to the, uh, the tub spout. So I have to have a cap actually, they call it a plug, but it's, it's a cap. So I can add that to my list and save another trip. We'll just uh, get all these things Tefloned up, screw those adapters on, and start uh, tightening them up. Got plenty of tape on it. Tighten these guys up good. Um, after I get all this get done handling it, I'll probably go ahead and wrap Teflon on this bottom port that I'm going to cap because it'll be hard to wrap it on there when it's already attached to the tub. Be hard to go around it. Be hard enough to screw a cap on it probably. Probably should just use another one of these female fittings and crimp on a short piece of PEX and a plug, but I think I'd rather have a cap. Found a cap in my 20 year old box of piping. I guess I'll get to keep working as soon as I answer this phone. Okay, uh, a lot of times you wind up, let me wait and get some light on, see if it helps. That, that LED light tends to flicker the same frequency as the camera and it looks kind of strange. Uh, I think that's worse, I don't know. Well, let's try it anyway. Normally, see it's, the valve is right now just sandwiched between the cover plate and the back of the, back of the shower with this uh, mud plate, mud ring. Uh, got these two long screws going all the way through and a lot of times you'll find them they're just left that way um, and it's fine until you take the two screws out and uh, take that cover plate off and then the thing's flopping around back in the wall it comes with this little mounting bracket the problem is it's really made to put together from inside the tub and of course most times on the fiberglass shower stall you're working from behind it so I've kind of made me a little block here where I can still put my two mounting screws back through this bracket into the brass body. 
So what I'll do is uh, uh, go ahead and hook up my plumbing because that's the reason you can't do this right now because you can't get back to your plumbing to work on it. Uh, I'll hook up the plumbing and then I can always slide this back on, put in my two little screws and screw it to the studs and you'll have something to hold the, the valve there uh, someday in the future when you take that cover plate off. Okay, I got the, uh, the hot and the cold attached to the actual back of the valve. I'm getting ready to do the little riser for the shower head. I got this little uh, drop ear 90. Uh, what you'll do is, uh, let me set you down here. Put me a ring on the bottom down here. Stick it down on top of the valve on that adapter. And then up there, where you got this 90, where you at right there? Um, I'll put a block across there and screw that 90 to it. That way when you reach up and grab your shower head, it'll be good and tight. Okay, so now that all the lines are attached, I'm gonna put my block on and screw it to the studs. And if you look through there, you can kind of see, I made these huge holes just to make it easy to get your screws lined up onto the uh, back of the faucet. These two holes are tapped and threaded. And you got these two little short screws to attach this. And the reason I had these, I got a couple of little dimples drilled. These screws were so long that come through the front plate, I had to make a recess in this block for them to uh, go into as well. But hopefully, as long as the screw will fit on the bit pretty good, should be able to ease right through this monster hole. Go right into the brass. Piece of cake on the top. Let's try the bottom. Can't see as good down here. I think we're there a little. We're close to something. Oh yeah. So I'll tighten these two guys up and then I can probably screw this block through the back of this stud, but I'll have to toe screw it over here. And then the shower should be not, the shower faucet control should be nice and sturdy. finger back there just so I don't come through the other side and screw into my pecs. My finger would probably be easier to fix. should be nice and sturdy over here when you pull on it or whatever. Probably can run and tighten these screws up just a little bit now too. So I think that'll work. I gotta go put my trim ring on there. It's actually got another piece that goes on here that I haven't put on yet. Here's the little trim sleeve that I don't have on there yet. Slides back in there, kind of caps everything off. And then Missy's looking for me an eighth inch Allen wrench to uh, put the handle on. As long as she doesn't leak, that'll be great. Well, we're back here trying to finish this plumbing. I picked up some uh, Three quarter inch crimp rings this morning and a couple other odds and ends so hopefully i got enough stuff to uh, wrap it up and get a pressure test on it
still warm. This thing has a ring on it. I didn't even know. Huh. I thought that was a quick release all the years. It's going to go in here just like that. And what I'm going to have to do is, I need to come out of that, I need a T with a half inch outlet to catch that shower that's sticking down over there, that, that blue pipe sticking down. And then we'll need a three quarter inch T to pick up the water coming in there. And then going out the back side of that three quarter T is going to be uh, a piece running on over to catch that last vanity and a uh, outside hose spigot. So I'm gonna put those two T's on down here where it's easy to get to before I bolt it on top of the water heater. I'm just gonna get me a measurement right there. Okay, I think we've got it wrapped up down here. We got that cold water ran on around, connected to the uh, water heater there. Also uh, jumps up and gets a shower right off the water heater. Uh, right before it gets to the water heater and then it the, two, the uh, cold water goes back three quarter inches Until it gets back there and tees off and goes to an outdoor spigot and up to the vanity. So We've got everything down here insulated except this bit of uh, three quarter inch Hot that I was running initially. I decided it would be easier at that time to uh, Just buy some of this slit insulation and put it on afterwards um uh, then I decided to go ahead and insulate the code, so I went by the shop and got some regular uh, one-piece Rubitex and went ahead and just cut pieces as I went, so you know, it's mostly insulated. Uh, I think it probably looks better insulated than that old squirrely plastic tubing running everywhere. So uh, I'm going to jump upstairs. We've got to do that other bathtub, and uh, then we should be ready for a pressure test. I looked at some of the raw video from when I was doing that shower night before last. And when it's real cloudy outside, kind of like it is today, there's just not much light back over here on this side of the house. So when I got here this morning, first thing I did, I brought a bunch of light bulbs from home that I had in my light bulb stash and went ahead and I just hot wired the lights at the switch boxes with a wire nut so I can flip them on and off over here at the uh, electric panel. Just, I'll, I'll go ahead and mark these breakers so I know which ones to turn on and off every day. But we've pretty much got light everywhere in the uh, house, which is a good thing. I can't wait till tonight. Only put two in this bedroom. I figured out what much I was gonna be doing back in that corner. Got the bathroom all lit up. I don't know if we can see that shower any better now. Yeah, I think we can. There's my little block I made to hold the little screws on that bracket. These things have a uh, temperature limit setting and when, when you get them they open about this far. Um, so I went ahead and cranked it up there and uh, we'll just make sure that the water heater's not set too high. Because uh, if you want water, if you want warm water you want to be able to have it when you want it. Okay guys, so I'm just getting this valve prepped and ready. I put the uh, three PEX female adapters on it. And then 
down the bottom here where the tub spout goes, you need to use something rigid like a copper or a galvanized. But um, what I did, you could you can actually sweat half inch copper into this valve body. It's actually made to receive half inch copper, but one, you have to gut it. And number two, um, you would have no margin for error as far as getting that nice and straight down through there. This way you have threads by putting a, a copper female on there and you can tweak it just a little bit if you need to to make it parallel to the uh, handle. So I thought I'd make this up first and that way I can measure my distance from the center of the valve to the center of the tub spout and I can go in there and drill the holes in my tub uh, the right distance apart. Okay guys, we need to pick a height for this tub spout. Uh, the only thing that's really important, it's got to be above the water level. Uh, but you need to also be able to get underneath it and get an Allen wrench in this thing. So uh, a lot of times people only put it two or three inches. Uh, I think you're supposed to have about a six inch air gap on most things, but that's a little too high. So let's just put it about right there. And then the faucet we put together was 16 and a half inches. Center to center. Whoa. Center to center. Put me a little dot right there. Uh, the only thing, there, it is important that you have that the right height. You can be, uh, it says between 12 and 18 inches. Uh, the reason that's important, I'm sure, is because these tubs and faucets are fairly inexpensive faucets to build. The water goes downhill because gravity lets it. And if you close this diverter, it puts back pressure on it, which makes it want to go up to the shower. So I guess if you had too much pipe here, it could try to back up a little bit and come out the shower all the time. Or if you had too little, I don't know what that would do. You think too little wouldn't matter, but anyway, we did what they said. We put it between 12 and 18, which 16 and a half right in there. Oh, we ain't bolted this thing down yet. Okay, you know the old saying about measure twice and drill twice? That's what we're doing now. We've got the bottom hole drilled. I'm just going to stick that through there and make sure I'm somewhere in the ballpark, which looks like I am, so it's safe to go ahead and drill this big three inch hole. messing up on this Dewalt drill. Fiberglass reminds me of those three days I spent in auto body class before the uh, calculus teacher went and told my mama I needed to be in her class instead. Okay, the shower's wrapped up, it, or, or bathtub. It was exactly like the shower, except for the addition of this uh, spout down for the uh, uh, bathtub spout. And what I did, I put another block down here and I took a larger three quarter inch copper clamp I had in my box of goodies and I just bend it a little bit to make it wrap around because you can't get to this side to screw a normal clamp on so that just secures that real good to make sure that you know if anybody puts any weight on this guy they don't you know uh you know flex anything like the fiberglass tub and break it so i uh, got a pressure test on the uh, water right now capped those off with just some black iron uh, i'll go down in the basement and get a shot of that and then uh, it's pizza time 
Okay, let's see. I just put 60 on her. Uh, this gauge says something different. That's the one that doesn't zero. And actually, it, I dropped it and it did zero, but who knows if it's right or wrong. But uh, I trust this one. I had to crank the uh, regulator up to let the pressure not try to, you know, do anything weird when it got right there at the limit. But uh, the thing I'll have to do in the morning, I need a high finch uh, sanitary tee to hook up that tub drain. So uh, I'll pick one of those up at Lowe's and then I can cut off this test plug. I wasn't going to use the bathtub to test. But he said they'd allow it, and it's actually a, a less of a test than I've already put on it. So I'll just do that and take out the questions. But I'll I'll get this puppy hooked up tomorrow and uh, call for inspection. If they say they're coming Tuesday for sure, I will uh, fill it up with water. I don't think it's supposed to freeze tomorrow night or get down to freezing. So uh, as long as the pressure holds on this PEX and I fill that tub up tomorrow and nothing's dripping out down here, we should be ready for uh, our uh, rough end inspections, finish all them up and try to get somebody in here insulating. Okay, just getting here, went by Lowe's and picked up that inch and a half sand tee I needed for that bathtub drain. I think I called it a half inch tee last night. I think I was thinking more about mozzarella cheese and pizza, but uh, Made me a little tag on my breaker last night so I'd know which one cut on these main lights without having to look because I definitely won't see master bath, dun, 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 hall bath. Which one's laundry room? Third one down. Ha! We got all kind of lights. Um, go down here and check and see if it held that pressure all night. Uh, I normally don't like testing with air. Uh, air doesn't really compress well, so uh, like water would. If, if this cap popped off, it would go through you or put your eye out if you were looking at it. Um, water, it would kind of pop up a little bit and you'd have a gush of water, but it wouldn't actually be, you know, destructive type force like it will with air. But being we're gonna be 20 some degrees this week uh, as a high, I definitely didn't wanna risk the chance of putting uh, water on it yet now what i will do i'm just doing that to get by the inspector as soon as i have insulation and can heat this place and leave the heat on a lower setting i will definitely uh, put water in it and uh, check it before we get the foot drywall up get that furnace turned on start warming this place up Uh, it's just a tick below 60 right now, but I had it super warm in here yesterday when I uh, When I actually set it So I'm going to assume that that air just cooled down that much And I'm gonna wait till later in the day and look at it again after I get this furnace cranked up and, and warm this place up I've Got a guy supposed to be coming by to give me a price on insulation this morning But what I'll do I'll uh, I'll go ahead and start hooking this bathtub drain up and uh, if I get done with that I might start running some of these ducks. My battery had died but fortunately Missy gave me an early Christmas present yesterday. It was uh, two batteries with a little charger that'll charge up to three at a time and uh, so I came up and put one of those in and I'm gonna charge the the original battery and I still have one left after this. So that's gonna make it a lot nicer. I uh, have got to uh, fix these clean out plugs before I fill it up with water. When I filled it up with water last time, about every one of them, if you left it long enough, would start having a drip every now and then. I just didn't put enough smooth on them. Looks like I just put a little Teflon on them, but I would actually use some pipe dope. I'll take these out and put some pipe dope on them and put them back in and then uh, uh, go get me a water hose and fill it up. Uh, I turned on this water and started running in the tub when I come back with my new $10 garden hose and you can see it kind of uh, splattered out. So I put this clamp on it 
I've got to watch it here for a few more minutes and turn it off before the tub runs over. Um, I went down in the uh, basement to get the camera and look around and I didn't see any leaks down there yet. Let's see, how much time do I have before it starts running over in the floor? I swept my puddle around so it wouldn't soak through. I've got about three or four inches. It won't take it long. It's a lot of pressure on this hose from over at Missy's house. I turned the furnace off when I left. I got chicken. We're up there pretty close though. It's still a little cool down in here. Yeah, it lines nice and full. You can tell it just feels heavy. When I was uh, redoing these clean outs, you could pick it up real easy. Now it's laying down there heavy. So, this is the plumbing I did this morning. It looks dry. Like I say, I think all this other will be okay because I'd already tested it unless something happened to it in the last little bit. I don't hear anything dripping on the plastic back there. Okay, I think I probably need to go turn that off. I don't know how tight that overflow is. I think it's very tight. Okay, I'm gonna go next door and cut the water off. Well, I went ahead and uh, unhooked the temporary power that was coming from Missy's house, since I don't need it anymore. Uh, I don't know what it is. It's something about that duct work I just don't want to do. I guess it's because it's my normal job. And who wants to do that on their day off, right? But uh, I got to looking down here and something I hadn't done yet that I need to go ahead and do. One of the inspections I get tomorrow is called the framing inspection. And uh, I probably need to go ahead and Put some lag bolts up here and maybe even a couple of uh, concrete anchors down there. Those will stay where they are once I fill this concrete in. The only thing I'm waiting on on that was I was going to wait until I got all the uh, weight of the drywall up there and just make sure that everything was still good and level because you can adjust it right now if you needed to. But uh, after you pour this back, there will be no more adjustment. do the same thing on the uh, other post and then maybe we'll grab a hammer drill and put us a couple of uh, thunder top studs down in the uh, concrete okay since we got the top secure it's time to make the bottom secure and to do that we'll grow a couple of uh, 3 8 diameter holes and we'll try to plug in right here and see if that cord will reach without an extension cord yeah That'll work. Hopefully it don't knock you all over. So I'm going to drill us a hole down here in this footer. I guess I can't wait any longer. I'm gonna go ahead and get started putting these boots on. I uh, bought this little hole punch. It's made to do uh, suspended sealing when I did the sealing there at the shop. 
um, is to punch the uh, the trim that goes around the walls or if you have to uh, punch it and put a rivet in uh, somewhere to hold a track together. Uh, does a good job for that. It's got this little adjustment to, for depth wise. You can slide this little chrome piece back and forth. But what I found it works great for is to uh, pre-punch these boots before you stick them up through the floor to give you a place to start your nail so you don't have to drive the nail through the metal. And if you, as long as you have the top of the boot flush with the floor and you have this gauge set right, you should be driving your nail directly in the center of the uh, subfloor. So you don't get, end up you know, being too close to the top or more than likely coming out the bottom, what I always do. And I think what I'm gonna do on these, I'm gonna go ahead and punch one in the center of the long sides. Usually I don't put nails in the long sides, but since it's my house, I can try and see if it works. If it does, I might do it in all of them. But so I've got me two nails in each end of the boot, which is what I normally put in it. And then I went ahead and punched a nail in the center of the long sides. Because you get a little bowing going on, uh, it's no big deal. You're going to caulk around them anyway. But uh, I'll at least punch this first one and try it. Went right on. Let me grab some tape. My helper's here. I'll get her to tire tape for me. Where have you been all day? Working. Okay. You can use mastic for this. This is just quicker and cleaner. these boots are made they've got seams uh, four four different seams here so I always take them as well Once we get the tape on it, then we put a panduit strap around the duct to make sure that it doesn't come loose. <laughs> Although with mastic tape, I doubt it would ever come loose. You don't get that stuff off if you ever need to go back and do something. Uh oh. <laughs> oh. But it was just my keys. Christmas. <clears throat> okay, so she's trying to get you back on so I can see what you're saying. Okay. So she the duct is secure, pan duct straps on it. Now we gotta pull the insulation up over this guy and tape it. And I try to get up as close to the subfloor as I can. Um, the insulation guy said I have to insulate my floor because of the city inspector. So 
I'm going to take him at his word and ask the city inspector tomorrow if he's going to make me do it. Which I'm assuming that's probably a big yes, but. Yeah. Where did my helper go? I'm right here. Come here and take this. Try to do it over here where everybody can see. Okay. Like I say, remember, you got to cram this thing up through the floor so you don't want that insulation all the way to the end. The tape's okay, the insulation is not okay. Usually on the inside of these 90 degree boots, about all you can do is just bend your tape at 90 degrees. See if you can see what that is there. And then pin it down. And when you get the front and the back, all that's left is these two little sides. Use your spatula all you can. Even if you don't hit the metal boot and cut your finger, this uh, edge of this tape is a, makes a mean paper cut. If you get it just right. Okay, so that's one out of 12, I think. Um, I'm going to do these first three. That's the longest ones in the house. When I say first three, I mean, you can see the light maybe coming through the floor up there to go. There's one, two, three down this side of the house that are the longest ones in the house because the trunk's over on the other side of the center line. So we're going to make those up and get them drug back there. And that way, maybe we can use the uh, cutoffs, the pieces of the duct that's left over when we get over to the trunk uh, on some of the shorter runs. Okay, I think it's about quitting time. Got uh, got all the uh, runs put on the boots and the boots nailed into the floor while Missy was here to help me. Um, so what I'll do, I'm, I'll have to wait around on the inspector most of the day tomorrow anyway, chances are, so I can get up under here and start strapping them up and cutting them off and making the final connections. Well, I actually just cut that piece off is the reason it's stuck up there uh, because it was long enough to make two so I guess this is its other other half right here and then uh, this last one here is a whole bag which is only going to need less than half of it so I just left it in the bag there for now this little guy here is real close you can see the there's an end boot up there and it's right beside the trunk so to cut down on noise, what I usually do on something like that is try to get you a longer piece of duct, you know, at least six or eight foot long, and we'll just loop him around like that, and she'll be fine. Uh, got all of them back there waiting to be hooked up. That was just some extra boots I brought that I had there to shop in case I needed to change what I was doing, but I did, and everything worked out just like we thought. So, uh, the, uh, Pressure still on 60. Like I said, it'll probably be down in the morning. It'll be a little cold. I might have to, uh, I might have to pump it back up in the morning while it's cold. Uh, Cause if it, he come in and it was a little under 60, he'd think, well, you probably put it on 60. So if he comes in, it's a little over 60. Uh, maybe I'll just put it on 60 in the morning if it's not there. Either that or turn the heater on real quick. I think it's this 40 gallon of air that cools off. This tank was cold, cold this morning. It feels pretty good right now. I had it pretty warm in here all day. Uh, it actually got, it's up to 50 outside right now and it's dark. So it was a pretty good day. But uh, I'll talk to you in the morning and we'll hopefully get our inspections and be ready for some insulation. Okay guys, I'm back here at the house. Uh, inspector's supposed to come today. Uh, I came down here and insulated the rest of that uh, hot water line where I hadn't uh, insulated it to start with but uh, what I need to do right now is get this water heater stand 
secured to the ground. They come with these brackets right here and they're made to fit in this little slot in the leg and then you bolt it down to the floor with something and that's supposed to hold it, you know, keep it from being knocked over, I guess in the event of an earthquake. Problem with these anchors that I used over here on the uh, uh, post is they don't stick out of the shield very far at all. So the anchor would actually be coming up out of the floor before it would actually start gripping. And there's a chance I could run out of threads too quick and it wouldn't be tight. So what I think I'm gonna do, just because these are the only anchors I have with me, is uh, see if I can just cut this uh, shield off a little bit and make it a uh, have more thread showing. Okay, I got the anchor. I just cl <clears throat> clipped it in a vice grip. I uh, <clears throat> cut off well on my grinder. slip that back over the anchor, drill us a hole and see if it works. That gives us many more threads here in order to clamp down on that bracket. That shouldn't go anywhere. Okay, I'm siliconing these boots in. I just drove the nails last night up about, you know, a quarter inch or so away from the sides. And these two nails work great, at least in this kind of wood. If you were doing a retrofit and you had hardwood floor or something, you had little strips up next to the wall, it probably wouldn't work good because you'd probably move the whole strip. But uh, what I usually do is just and it would work better if you had gloves on because you wouldn't get silicone all over your hands, but I've already done a couple, so there's no point in stopping now. I'm basically waterproof at this point. But leave that to where you can get a little silicone down beside the boot, between the boot and the subfloor. And then when you take the nails home, Adjust the corners a little bit. Silicone actually helps them. It's best to keep two rags, one to clean up the mess in your hammer because it's going to feel pretty sticky pretty quick and then another one to wipe your hands on. Like I say if I'd been smart enough to put on rubber gloves I'd have been wiping the gloves off right now. My hands would have been okay when I was done. That looks like there's nothing in there, but you can actually see the silicone ooze out. So, that's how I'm air sealing my boots. Well, we passed inspection, so we just let the air off of the uh, water lines. Picked us up a gallon of antifreeze uh, for this trap at the washing machine and the trap over there at the uh, bathtub. But what we got to do now is go down and take that blow up plug out of that clean out without getting too wet. Let's see how we do. This ain't going to be pretty. What happens with these things is when you start to let the air out, they get just a little bit loose, but not enough to come around the corner, so the water starts squirting out. What if I could lay something on it? Like what? I don't know. Is there a box or anything? Ah, let's just I think try you it. already took it all out. Let's just try it. All we can get is wet. Okay. Woo! That was 
fun. <laughs> well, I hope you got that. Oh, it wasn't recording. <laughs> All right, so now we've got the water drained out. I did put the, uh, the little screw-in plug in the bathtub up there so that I could uh, see how well it drains. So as soon as all this water's out of these lines, I'm gonna go up and take it out and make sure the bathtub drains good with my wet vent that I used. Also earlier, while I was waiting on the inspector, went ahead and cut this tea in and hooked in the condensate drain where we talked about putting it. Well, I was gonna take Missy someplace nice to eat on the left here, but I'm wet now. I guess it's gonna be bologna for supper. I like bologna. Um, since I had this tub full of water, I wanted to go ahead and make sure it drained good. So I went ahead and screwed this plug in it. So I'm gonna unscrew it and see how a full tub of, it would probably drain better without this overflow cap on there, but I'm gonna try it with nothing. Let's see how much it can push out. Like it's going in. I can hear it running. <laughs> oh. do, do, do. See, it's almost Christmas. Insulation guys can't come until after first of the year, so might get to take a little break. Maybe not be here every day, 12 hours a day. It seems like she's getting enough air. It hadn't tried to make a little tornado yet. It's not gurgling any. It should uh, It should eventually make a little tornado. Okay. Though, what? You got a tornado started? Uh -huh. Yeah, I think I see it right in the middle there. There uh -huh. it goes. There it is. Fine. Now we'll pour a little antifreeze in these two traps and we'll get out of here. I know how to keep it from freezing. Let's do the washing machine now. I knocked the little plug out. I've had it flooded above this washing machine before, so I wasn't worried about it leaking. I don't ever freeze. Uh, one thing I did that I forgot to film is I, I uh, <coughs> sprayed the fire foam around all the penetrations, either through down to the basement or up to the attic. Uh, I got to thinking they probably won't see that one that came. So they did. Uh, Inspector said I did have to have uh, insulation under the floor. He agreed with me, saying that you know it really wasn't worth the money you spend on it and the hassle of dealing with it over the next however many years. Insulation hanging down and coming loose and getting saturated. And I just hate to see it under there, but I'll have to do it. So. Uh, we will. I'm going to actually put the insulation, let them put the insulation in before I do my duct work, or before I extend the ducts over to the uh, trunk. Uh, and they also want to see the insulation uh, before I put up sheetrock, so I have to get them back one more time, but that'll be somebody else's bill because I'm going to pay somebody to do the insulation. I got a quote. Um, I went and looked at like the Lowe's app to see how much the insulation would cost me that they were putting in in the uh, insulation in the walls, the insulation under the floor, and the blow-in insulation in the attic along with the uh, uh, styrofoam baffles that we'd use at the eaves um, would cost me $194 less if I buy it and do it myself than it is to let them do it. And it would probably take me a week plus, you know, borrowing the machine and taking it back for the blow-in. So definitely going to get somebody else to do the insulation. 
so I guess this will wrap up another video. Uh, again, probably won't do anything here for a week or two, maybe run some doorbell wires or TV wires, stuff like that. But uh, I'm kind of at the, uh, with the holidays and all coming up, the insulation guy said they probably couldn't get here after the first of the year. So that'll probably be our next video will be insulation and maybe some drywall. So hope you all have a wonderful holiday and we'll see you next year.